given the change in immigration laws over the last 50 years and this kind of idea of identity, like even that label, can you talk a little bit about identities and labels? I guess the thing that makes me really excited about this time and the conversation around identity is that that we're able to ask these kinds of questions, we're able to talk about it. Dr. King impacted lives across the board. He spoke so broadly and at the same time, you know, you always kind of felt like he was speaking to you. He was calling you to action. The way I remember him, right, because I was alive, I was a little girl, was that I wanted to write him a letter. Dr. King, you could have never imagined that there was this little Mexican-born girl sitting maybe just blocks away from when you were speaking in Chicago one day. You could have never imagined that your words were the first words that I heard that made me feel that maybe one day, maybe one day, I could be good enough to be considered a real American. As a communicator, how do you know which stories to tell and which stories not to tell? It's about, you know, trying to create a conversation about how we're going to do a particular story, why we're going to do a particular story. As Americans, we all um, have the power of our voice. He married the notion of having voice with the presence of your body. It wasn't a meme, it wasn't an Instagram story, it wasn't a tweet. We actually saw what it looked like when you made a decision of where you wanted to put your body and your intellect. When journalists back then finally made the right decision to show the film and the images of how peaceful protesters were met with rage and fire hoses and dogs and fists and billy clubs and spit, then the rest of America saw who were those protesters and how much that group of multiracial protesters loved this country and how much they were willing to give up for it. With the rise of fake news, how do you think that has affected your voice as a journalist? For the people who know us and trust us, our credibility is the reason why they turn to us. There's a notion that somehow um, if you are an immigrant or a refugee that, um, that then the civil rights of the United States don't apply to you because you're not born here. And no, in fact, um, without being born here, you still have rights. It's clear that we're facing so many of the same battles in different ways, has a different look, not, you know, pulling people off of, um, you know, counters, or stools in, in front of counters at Woolworths. Other things are happening, though, that are, are quite distressing. We need to get beyond our comfort zones. We need to allow ourselves to, to act because we feel afraid for our neighbors. We need to do that in 2018, just like Martin Luther King did and showed us how to do until the moment of his death 50 years ago.